Aaron Dykes here with a quick update from Infowars.com investigating the stealth implementation of the United Nations Agenda 21 right here in the United States under the name of sustainable communities. So why is this important? To oppose Agenda 21 is to oppose the planned society. As the cartoon Plannedopolis tried to convince us. I'm looking forward to showing you around Plannedopolis today. Where we were told how great life would be under a centralized system. No, not meat. It's not your birthday. The Global Food Council are doing a really good job of keeping food production going. Directed by technology. Switch off brain and go to work. <laughs> With this many people around, I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. Despite the fact that our lives would be tightly controlled, including calorie restrictions. Have you got your calorie card open on your smartphone? transportation restrictions. I registered your visit with Slick Travel Corp the other day, so they've uh, allotted you a journey time. People have asked what's so bad about Agenda 21. The founders believed in a separation of powers, but the modern day framers worked through the United Nations, through bankers working with communist and collectivist systems, and through environmental groups who want to seize land and redirect it for the vision of a few who wish to rule from the top. It's taking away our free will you know, the American way. To fight against Agenda 21 is to oppose the straitjacket being opposed upon us under global and environmental pretexts. I want you to think for a minute about the existing neighborhood and housing regulations people voluntarily sign up for when they move into different neighborhoods, how tall your grass can be, whether or not you can have a basketball court or a fishing boat or an RV in your front yard, or in many cases, even in your backyard. You've seen the news articles where people aren't allowed to grow garbage gardens in many areas, that is nothing compared to what's coming. If you followed the cap and trade laws that they tried to pass through Congress that were narrowly defeated only because there was a huge outcry, those thousands of pages were going to implement all kinds of new regulations on people's homes, on the kind of cars they can drive, on top of the already existing burdensome regulations. They were going to have housing inspectors, new rules on what kind of light bulbs you can have, and on and on. It was this endless laundry list. That's the kind of thing we're seeing happening under sustainable development. It's not sustainable at all. I can give you dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of quotes from leading globalists who say they want to destroy society. Mari Strong, one of the leading advocates for Agenda 21 and a speaker at the United Nations Rio Summit in 1992, said, isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse. Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? A number of these environmental groups have said things to the same effect. They want to stop growth. That's what smart growth, so-called, is all about. It's not about new developments. It's about controlling and steering where humanity is allowed to go. They say they don't want there to be another United States in the developing world. They don't want other countries to be brought up to our living standards. They want to lower the United States living standards to a third world area, greatly reduce the population across the globe and here at home and have more and more say in your life, what you're allowed to do on your own land, because it's now going to be rezoned under these sustainable development plans. And it's just like the things we've already seen in China. In fact, the workshop I was at in Elgin for these sustainable communities specifically talked about shop houses where they would have workers live in the same buildings they were working at. That's already going on in China and it's nightmarish. You've heard about the Foxcom factory workers who commit suicide to such an extent that they have to put up suicide nets so that their own workers can't escape their own lives. They're basically slaves. You can call it what you want. We spoke to a number of people throughout the community as well as these local bureaucrats and some of them recognize that these kind of plans to contain humanity and tell you how big or what kind of house you can live in is a Chinese-style tyranny come home to America. Agenda 21 is a plan we've been signed on to with the United Nations where we give up our property rights and freedom and be forced to live in apartments no bigger than this square. What do you think about that? I think that's terrible. It sounds kind of like Chinese foreign policy or interior policy regarding their house and how they're controlling all aspects of your life. And furthermore, communist China really is the ultimate class system. We're trained to think of communism as a leveling, as an equalizing of everyone, but it's actually not. It's the ultimate insider scheme. Party bureaucrats who control that communist model, they regulate all land. They have the final say in who's allowed to buy, sell, and use that land, and they take it from ordinary people and redistribute it in a nepotism to their friends, their family, other top regulators. That 
that's the true class system. I just wanted to throw that in there. Agenda 21 is a wide-spanning plan to contain humanity in the 21st century. Be aware of this international scheme. Be informed and help stop this plan in your local area before it's too late. Eco-fascists call for prison cities. Uh, Watson wrote a great informative article that's more detailed, Planned Opolis, Elitist Agenda for Eco-Enslavement. I'm going to cover that in deep detail coming up in about 15 minutes when we start uh, the bottom of the hour uh, segment. But I called Watson this morning and I said, look, I want to integrate this in with the fact that this is literally the facelift, the 2.0 version of the scientific eugenics dictatorship and that in their own UN admissions and the State Department memorandum 200 and others they admit they are building a prison planet that's why we have prisonplanet.com that's why I call it a prison planet in road to tyranny that I released in 2002 that's why the 2007 film in game blueprint for global enslavement released almost four years ago begins with the prison planet you will be locked down you will be allowed to have one child if you can pay all the taxes you will be completely enslaved you will not be able to travel outside your neighborhood there will be uh, no travel allowed but essential travel and this is the stated plan rationing for everything total control so i suggest that everyone tune in coming up in about fifteen minutes and call everybody you know and tell them to tune in because this is the big enchilada this is where we're going and this is not my opinion. I want to make that clear. Just like it's not my opinion, they've had massive secret weather modification going on for more than 50 years. Now it's all being declassified in your face. Most of it weather weapons. It's not a secret that they're doing secret chemical, biological, radiological testing uh, on the population. All of that uh, is coming out in the open. And, and what they're doing is flaunting all of this until we just get acclimated. See, the general public, if they don't see people go to prison for spying on them without warrants, and they don't see people go into prison for shooting up foster kids with pesticides and unapproved drugs and uh, biologicals and chemicals and radiologicals, if they don't see people going to jail for stealing trillions of dollars, the private Federal Reserve, and not telling Congress where the money went, if, if they can put TV ads on showing children being murdered if they don't accept carbon taxes, and that's seen as moral now, and Jack Bauer tortures kids in front of their parents to get answers, and that's seen as moral, then it becomes immoral to be against all that. And they know exactly what they are doing. Okay, they are warping us right now. They are warping us. And, you know, I say this is 21st century Nazism. That's not really right. But I use that as a term so the general public gets where I'm coming from. It's not fair to the Nazis. The Nazis were horrible. Eugenicists, globalists that wanted one world government. But... A, it's not uh, based in full reality. The Nazis were only an extension of the scientific dictatorship movement that was funded out of the U.S. and England into Germany on record by the Rockefeller Foundation, by the Saxe-Coburg Gothas, by the Huxleys, by the Wedgwoods. Uh, by the Darwins. The, 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 they were the rock stars. You read any New York Times, Washington Post, uh, Times of London, Financial Times, 1900, 1910, 1920s, 30s, up into 1940, Time Magazine, Life Magazine. It's all rock star eugenics, okay? They built our world. They made our world. The science of biometrics, the science of genetics, the science of computers, all of it was founded for eugenics. Everything is eugenics. Everything, our entire civilization is built towards what they're now bringing us into the final phase of. Okay? Now that's the big, giant enchilada right there. Okay? You're in a kill grid. I'm in a kill grid. It's a scientific takeover program. They study us. We'll be right back. Knowing is half the battle. So I sit here every day and do the research. I make films, I do radio, TV interviews, and I know I'm 100% right about the globalist own statements. And I have people like Nightline and others come here and laugh at me 
Why not tell them there's a world government being set up? And they do TV specials saying I'm insane. And doesn't matter how many documents I have, what proof I have. I sit there and talk to adult men and women who have children. And I say, listen, I, I want to give you the Rockefeller documents where they're adding sterilants to the vaccines. They don't want them. Hey, I want to give you the State Department memorandum. They don't want it. Let me give you the biological diversity assessment calling for 80% extermination. They don't want it. Because they've subconsciously made a decision and then consciously made the decision that they just want to think it's all about ball games and uh, having fun and planning their vacation. It's all me, 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 me. They're so selfish that their own future is being destroyed right in front of them and their children's future, but they're so in the minute that they can't think long term. And the globalists are masters at making sure everything goes at a slow, phased in pace and every new phase of the enslavement is advertised and promoted and given cover stories. See, the general public is given cover stories. And then after the control grid and each phase is in, then they go from denying it to saying, oh yeah, of course we control the weather. Well, of course we're putting stuff in your water. What do you think we do it for, silly? Well, of course, we, and, and I'll be on countless radio shows and read quotes about how they want to reduce world population. And the talk show host, liberal, conservative, entertainment, comedy, whatever the case is, conservative mainline talk radio, uh, you know, comedy like Opie and Anthony, doesn't matter. I give them chapter, verse, I give them documents, and they say, well, maybe there are too many people. That makes sense. See, in the earlier version of propaganda, they were supposed to deny this was going on because people hadn't been pre prepared psychologically yet. Now that we've reached the phase where they're going into a more hardcore level, it's like, yeah, okay, everybody knows they're killing us, but it's good. They think it's like received knowledge and special and intellectual that, 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 that they're into it. And subconsciously, they kind of see it as they're the elitist by, by accepting it and by going along with it. They believe they have power over it. It's called delusion. And different people are still in different phases of the propaganda. The media simultaneously says there's no move to world government, and it's not going to be run by big international banks. That's insane. While saying, oh, my gosh, we just got a new plan to save the global economy. It's a global government run by big private central banks. So we're going to have a world government. We're setting it up right now with a Bancor global cashless currency, and we're phasing out cash and uh, all of that, and we're going to have forced inoculations. And we are having your neighbors spy on you. And we are putting in telescreens to watch everyone. But there's no world government. There's no Bancor global currency. No one's spying on anybody. And it's all insane if you criticize it. And so people who've been culturally trained by the television and the double speak and the brainwashing, it's seen as an attribute to be able to buy into the open, ridiculous, cartoonish level, absurdist fraud. And... So your neighbor will both laugh at you with a self-assured look when you talk about world government, but then also say, well, we all know that's what we need. Ha <laughs> ha, you think there's a world government, but of course there is one, but it's good. But you're still crazy. And that's seen as a knowledge to be gullible, to be stupid, to be foolish, to trick yourself, to be into being uh, abused and robbed. And, and as long as people have their baubles, their iPhones, their iPads, their computers, their, their cars... Uh, their, you know, their latest cool clothes, they're happy to sell out their liberty, their freedom, their dignity. A lot of people fetishize submitting to abuse and tyranny. I mean, when a cop comes up to me and I'm on a street corner demonstrating and says, I'm going to arrest you if you don't leave, I see it as a full assault on the Bill of Rights and Constitution. I know if that goes, everything follows and then we'll be in bondage. I know what it means to private property and family. I know the danger.
I want to wake the cop up. I don't want him to be an instrument of my destruction and their destruction. So I become outraged. And the yuppie will say on YouTube, oh, just follow authority. Do what you're told. Don't be so uppity. You know, go along. Bend over. We'll be right back to break down the eugenics. This is key. It is one thing to read United Nations biological diversity assessments and Club of Rome reports and Rockefeller Foundation reports where they openly come out and say that they were going to train us to not have families, that they were going to break up our industrial society and our agrarian society so that we're dependent on the state, that the government and mega corporations that grow up around it would control every uh, facet of our lives. And to see the United Nations 50 plus years ago reporting on this, the Rockefeller Foundation almost 100 years ago pushing this, Edward Bernays uh, promoting it, countless globalists, Aldous Huxley, his brother at the UN, Julian Huxley, H.G. Wells, all of them writing nonfiction books, battle planning, this absolute nightmare where this tiny scientific elite would rule over the population. And this giant control grid, these compact prison cities, are a means to an end. And they are prisons. And that's why I have the website prisonplanet.com. They are turning our local communities into prisons, our schools into prisons, the hospitals into prisons. And, and now more and more I see citizens in Australia in the headlines. Hospitals are now prisons. I see articles in the U.S. Schools are now prisons. They are. And, it, and by increment, we're being brought into these prisons. And we're also being told that this new collectivism is for the earth. It has nothing to do with the environment. The global engineers, when you read their deeper writings, say... They're going to remake the earth. They could care less about the earth. Anything they destroy, they believe through genetic engineering and their seed vaults, they're going to be able to rebuild. They believe in destroying something to recreate it. They think they're God. So understand that. Now, something else is going on here. I'm going to go through all of this here. It may take 30 minutes, it may take an hour. But I'm going to break this down right now. The prison city, the prison planet. The end of humanity as we know it, irrevocably damaging and breaking the human family, re-engineering it, just like they re-engineer a salmon or they re-engineer a goat to produce spider webs for body armor. We are being engineered. Our water is being manipulated. We're being electromagnetically manipulated. It's all admitted. And the biggest message here is the average bureaucrat or cop or enforcer or TSA person, you are under just as much attack as all of us. You are on our side of the fence. There's only a few thousand top globalists. Even Rothkopf, the head of the Kissinger Group, admits that in a book he wrote, and he also wrote an article about it for the Washington Post three years ago called Superclass, where he openly admitted that there are 6,000 global superclass rulers. And, 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 of course, he's a mid-level servant, so he would see it from that perspective as one of the 6,000 super gophers. There's less than 20 super families, only a couple hundred master owners. And a very few at the top uh, who have total power. And that's what these global councils have created. And it's because the globalists know how to combine forces and work together that they're so dangerous. They have a goal. It is immortality. This is their own statements. It's covered in my seminal film Endgame. Their own statements over and over again. Planetary government, control grid under uh, environmental rationing, then controlled bioweapon plagues release that they have the cure for, the immunity for. Underground bases that they will reemerge from after we've been eliminated. Now, this is going to happen. I told you gold was going to go from 300 to 1400 10 years ago. It has. I told you they were going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on their asset bin Laden. It happened. I've told you they're going to announce a world government, world bank. I told you that they would steal trillions in the bailout and then not tell Congress where the money went. All I do is eat, drink, and sleep and dream and pray this information. That's all I do. 
when I'm holding my littlest daughter in my arms, my smallest daughter, I'm trying to think about her and love her, and I do, but I am somewhere else. Okay? This is all, this is 100% happening. You understand? You are being murdered. You are being killed. You are being brain damaged. Your potential is being bent and stunted now. Let me start getting into this information. Here is Paul Watson's latest article. Two articles today by the one, the only Paul Watson. Plandopolis, elitist agenda for eco-enslavement. I called them. We had a 30-minute consultation this morning, and I said, your article isn't hardcore enough. It doesn't give them the full magnitude. I want this article. Eco-fascist call for prison cities. He did it. These people are absolute control freak murdering filth. And I wrote these notes I wanted to cover. First, there's an attempt to rebrand dystopia. They're lovingly taking their time destroying the human species, irrevocably wrecking humanity. The prison school, city, state, nation, planet. The end of the family. Now, what got me so upset this morning is their brazen nakedness. There is an organization in England funded by the government that partners with The Guardian, just as The Guardian and others partnered uh, with the 1010 group that produced the movie theater ads and TV ads, where the teacher says, okay, we're going to play it again later, okay, uh, will you cut your carbon footprint? And most of the kids say yes, a uh, few say no, and they blow up a bunch of 10-year-olds, little girls, little boys, guts and blood fly everywhere. Then it shows the same thing at a business office, at a football club, the whole thing. They know that once you don't have bedrock morals that are your own, that's why they attack anything old. may not be perfect the way the Christian faith manifests or the Muslim faith or the Judaic faith or the Buddhist faith doesn't matter. They attack it because it's old and it's guaranteed to have a lot more common sense than what they're doing. Like the family's good. Independence is good. Spying and tattling on neighbors is bad. Governments that wear black uniforms are bad. Just archetypal understandings. They are taking in archetypal wickedness and saying, Luke Skywalker bad, Darth Vader good. They're throwing extreme things out, torturing children in front of their parents, good. That's what the new hero does, murdering children, good. And they're interplaying it where they can say, this foreign group is bad when they do it, but our government's good when they do it. And all the nature shows and the programs and the brainwashing in public and private schools, all of them. Teach. Humans are bad. Humans are evil. And then they get you to do something reasonable at first. A low flush toilet. No lead paint. Catalytic converters. Then it's don't take a hot bath. Then it's don't have more than one child. Then it's spy on your parents for environmental crimes that aren't even crimes yet, but have them write fake tickets on mommy and daddy and write dossiers on mommy and daddy and then have news articles everywhere where Parents are in the news approving of their children, instructing them and tattling on them with government orders. Just absolute 110% creme de la creme, ultimate tyranny. The greatest expression of tyranny, children openly turned against their parents by the state. And so they're just practicing all of this right out in front of all of us. And I've mentioned this years ago. I've mentioned it previously, and it's so important. It's the Overton window. And there's other psychological schools of thought that say the same thing. The communists talked about this. Lenin talked about freezing and unfreezing society. Create enough crisis, enough fear. Unfreeze the status quo. When it's liquefied, they can remold it like wet clay in the image they want and then freeze it again. We are in an unfrozen mode right now as they bring in the tyranny. But in that open window, we can strike back, and we are. Now, another way to see it is the Overton window. The Overton window is a political theory described as a window in a range of public reactions to ideas and public discourse in a spectrum of all possible opinions on a particular issue. It is named after its originator, Joseph P. Overton, former vice president of the 
Mechanic uh, Center for Public Policy, and it goes on. At any given moment, the window includes a range of policies considered to be politically acceptable in the current climate of public opinion, which a politician can recommend without being considered too extreme or outside of the mainstream to gain or keep public office. Overton arranged the spectrum on a uh, vertical axis of more free or less free in regards to government intervention. When the window moves or expands, ideas are accordingly become more or less politically acceptable. The degrees of acceptance of public ideas can be described roughly unthinkable, radical, acceptable, sensible, popular policy. Well, now they've taught children in school not to have opinions, not to judge cultures like Aztecs bad, Nazis bad, Communists bad, Renaissance good. So people can't judge. Then they come in, though, and say, but you've got to follow our moral dictates. Save the earth. You're bad. Kill yourself. Death education. The, the, the world without humans. The planet after humans. All these TV shows. All these movies. Apocalyptic doom coming. Everyone dead. Getting you ready so that you accept it as everyone's dying around you from the bioweapon they will release. I believe bioweapon's the way they're going to go. There'll be beta tests ahead of it. At least a lot of you servants of evil, when you're being killed by this, if we don't turn this around, at least when it's happening, finally you'll wake up and get right with God. And that's what matters at the end of it. And some people will survive and dig in. And then you'll fully know when the government's flying around and it's drones saying, come out, come out, we want to help you, the plague is over, you'll know that's the enemy. A lot of you'll still come out, though, even when that happens. But it doesn't matter. You'll be watching this transmission later, and I'm speaking to you in the future. And that's what matters. We can beat these people, even if they were able to carry it this far. Now you know. Now you know how real it is. All right, continuing. So what they're doing is they're just out in the open saying, we'll murder your children. They have green police ads for Audi. And then the, 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 the ad agency in San Francisco, months after I told you this, came out and said, this is what we really want. We're, we're using this as a social message that you will be arrested for the wrong light bulbs. San Francisco Chronicle. As I, t I played that out of Green Police and I said, this is what they're going to do. This is their real plan. This is their program. Now they're putting out all these TV ads and videos promoting horrible, horrible dystopic futures where if you don't accept a police state control grid, you're going to be put in a ghetto. You don't accept a microchip under your skin? That's what all the transhumanists say. That's what the government says. Oh, you don't have to have the brain chip. You just won't be able to get a job anywhere. And they lay out how wonderful it is that you only get meat on your birthday, that you've got to have a travel pass, that everywhere you go is tracked. And they say it with a straight face how great it is, knowing they're moving the Overton window into the bizarro. So that they pull you so far away that just having a smart meter controlling the temperature of your house sounds reasonable compared to what they're proposing, murdering school children if they don't submit. Now it doesn't sound so extreme to say, hey, we just want a smart meter in your house. That sounded extreme 10 years ago when I told you about it and people laughed even when I had the government reports on it. Now they're going in everywhere and it's just accepted. I mean, this is diabolical psychological warfare. Now... What they don't tell you is once you're in the compact cities, those will be the final kill grids. And they're going to have the compact cities, not just in the name of the environment, but when they wipe out with, with genetically uh, designed race-specific weapons, when, you know, when people see tens of millions dying, those will just be the beta test. People will run into the compact cities, kind of a 12-monkey scenario where we're all going into this. See, they're going to hit us from that, security, bioweapon security, environmental when you read the SPP, you learn a lot, and you see it mirrored in all their other programs, how they say every crisis, the answer will be North American merger. See, every crisis, the answer will be high-tech surveillance cities. And it's all being announced, the big rollouts, the control grids, the face-scanning cameras, multi-billion dollar in Texas and San Antonio and outside Salt Lake and Utah, giant spy center, cybersecurity, total control, high school recruiting of all the young hackers, armies of them to shut down free speech. I mean, they're moving in full mechanization against free humanity right now.
They're going to increase the degenerative bio and chemical weapons and uh, radiological and also the electromagnetic weapon systems they're pumping in against us. That's all going to now start increasing. Your neighbor's dying to your left, your right, you dying. It's just going to get worse and worse and them saying everything's fine and the yuppies giggling and, you know, local jogging groups to raise money, you know, because everybody's dying. we got to find the cure to it. That'll be put into bioweapons funding to actually make more bioweapons for you and your family. All the major groups fighting the diabetes, the cancer, the heart disease, all actually funding and running uh, operations on how to carry it out. Full spectrum dominance, full death, full massacre. This is the giant plan. We're going to go to break here in a moment, but I want to go ahead and play from Endgame just the first few minutes of the film. After the three-minute intro, the first few minutes where I lay out the prison planet control grid, and then I'm going to play, produced with government money out of England, what they're showing school kids about the future. It's exactly what I say, but saying it's good. Now... How did I know this? Because it was their written plan. But to see it manifesting. Now, you heard me just play from the intro uh, of the documentary. Then we get into more uh, you know, chapters going through every facet of it with all the proof, their statements, their video clips, how they're going to set up the grid, how they're going to cut off our resources, always promising to fix things. We give them more power, always getting more of a stranglehold around us and then killing us. And uh, the average yuppie who finally accepts this automatically says, well, then I'll be part of the elite. No, you won't. Get that through your head. It's very sick that you go along with this. But I guess you were taught in college that it's cool to be into killing people and that there's too many people and you have a disdain for folks. So you're getting what you deserve. But I don't deserve it. My family doesn't. And free humanity and people that have got a soul out there don't deserve it. And we stand against you. Now, we're going to go to break here in a few minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and start playing this clip. Uh, and, again, this is uh, airing uh, over in England. This is promoted with government funding. The London Guardian's involved. Uh, the planned opolis, elitist agenda for eco-fascist enslavement. And I'll start playing part of it now. I'll come back and play the rest of it. But it's so amazing how they just calmly... Describe total surveillance, total tyranny, food rationing, government authorization to even travel to work every day. But it's not tyranny. It's done to save the earth. What came out all over the news in the last week, that the, and it's confirmed, the German government admits it's true. They claimed that it was for the environment, all these spy satellites they were launching, these infrared spy satellites, oh, the billions of dollars... It wasn't to spy on you in England and the United States and Europe. No, in the U.S.-German uh, BND partnership. No, it was to, ch to check for greenhouse gases. Turns out it's body scanning from orbit. This is their cover. It has nothing to do with the Earth. What Bill Gates say on TED TV last year? He said, we've got to lower the human population to lower the carbon footprint. Humans exhale carbon dioxide. It's part of the life cycle. Then plants, they release oxygen. They respirate and operate and engage in photosynthesis from carbon dioxide that animal life puts off. Then they release oxygen that animal life lives on. Symbiotic carbon cycle. Water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, sunlight. Four things. Four things. And they've got the public convinced and ready to salute going after carbon dioxide. You want to genetically engineer cross-species spider goats, salmon, everything deadly, just hurting the earth? Go for it. You want to breathe? No. Most of our affiliates carry the first five-minute segment, but some don't. So I'm going to launch back into this newest video and get into these incredible articles by Paul Joseph Watson in the next segment uh, that's about seven minutes away. Let me just tell you about some of the other uh, information coming up. Uh, in uh, one hour from now, Alan Watt will join us uh, for an hour. Then Piers Corbin, meteorologist who actually understands how the weather works, dealing with uh, solar uh, and uh, moon interactions, dealing with the solar winds, which the ancients knew now in the last 20 years. 
uh, has been proven that uh, what's driving the cloud formations is not potash and volcanoes, uh, but is all of the massive ionizing radiation, particles, micrometeorites by the ton that are coming into the atmosphere every day. Yeah, we're big spaceship, folks, hurtling through uh, the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. We're out here on the boondocks orbiting a little sun, and we're moving mighty fast orbiting that sun, and uh, space is not a void. It is filled with energy. It is filled with the quantum vacuum with the ether and just in our dimension uh, there are just so many gamma rays and x-rays and particles and it just it's just full spectrum and of course now the mathematical equations of Einstein and others have been proven to correct many physicists predicted there would be a hexagon in the ice cap of um, the gas giant Saturn and after the different uh, was it Voyager and others went over? They did uh, photograph that hexagon, which is a dimensional expression on the surface of the gas giant that mathematics showed would be there in a gas giant of that size, an expression of a dimension uh, beneath the surface or a space wormhole distortion of a type. I don't claim to be a physicist. I just read the major bodies of the work and then regurgitate it as a lay creature here on air, ladies and gentlemen. But I study the mass psychology of tyrants, the psychopathic elites that always take control, the scum rising to the top after uh, good rises to the top, milk and honey flows, then we become fat, dumb, and happy, then the evil takes over. Uh, of course, action alert. Now the FDA is going after vitamin C. That's up on prisonplanet.com. Utah welcomes NSA Mega Snoop Center, prisonplanet.com, infowars.com. Plantopolis, elitist agenda for eco enslavement, prisonplanet.com. Eco fascists call for prison cities. I know Matt Drudge listens to the show, and Matt Drudge in the last five years has taken a clear course into liberty and fighting the globalist and covering the Bilderberg Group and covering everything else. And Matt Drudge gave us a Christmas present. The only uh, red links out of green links on Christmas Day were Alex Jones at InfoWars.com. So I, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. When somebody you know, gives me so much, and, and humanity so much, in, in, uh, in, in really turning towards liberty, towards the pole star, the North Star, um, I don't like to ask for more, but if Drudge is listening, I'd really like it if you'd link to Ecofascist Call for prison cities. You know, I burn with desire to expose these people, and I know you do as well. And uh, it'd be nice if Drudge linked to that. And if, it, if, if you do, I won't start asking every day. I have asked before that Drudge move a link to the top to see if he was listening, and he did within minutes. I don't know if Drudge is listening today, but Matt Drudge, we appreciate you. Matt Drudge is a smart guy. He realizes none of us have any future if we don't beat these people. And the truth is what matters. And uh, Drudge isn't perfect, none of us are, but he is moving in the right direction in a big way. And forcing Glenn Beck and many others and Wash Limbaugh to go in the right direction. He truly is setting more and more of the agenda. I'd like to see Ecofascist call for President Cities to be on uh, the all-powerful Drudge Report. Uh, all-powerful, that is, an alternative media cyberspace uh, projection of information. Breaking through the electronic Berlin Wall, the globalist. Uh, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a dangerous game, though, the drug is playing. I understand that, and he knows that. We're all playing a dangerous game. All right, so we've seen the TV ads where children don't submit to carbon taxing, so the teacher murders them by detonating explosives. We have seen the promotion by Prince Philip and Ted Turner and others that we should have a one-child policy, official UN policy. China is the model, forced abortion. We're useless eaters, feeders, all of this Nazi eugenic nomenclature being openly used. But the West, the United States and England, that part of the West, the Anglo-American arm, did not get these ideas from Herr Goering, Herr Hitler, Herr Goebbels. They got it from the British. Not bashing the British people, I myself am Jones, as Welsh as it comes. That system was developed in England germinated, exploded, chestated in the United States. Mexico loved it. 
Uh, I mean, all these countries bought into it. That's the death panels. That's the euthanasia. That's the brainwashing that's going on. So at the end of the last hour, I played the first few minutes from Endgame, where I said prison cities, rationing, the end of the family. You'll have to have travel passes to go to work. How did I know that? That's the official Club of Rome UN. And the film Endgame, over two hours long, breaks it all down. It's free on YouTube and Google. Higher quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. I'm not making expensive films here and traveling all over the world and getting arrested and detained to play a game here, folks. This is real. Now, I get up this morning at about 6 a.m. I waddle into the computer, wake up, start drinking coffee, and I see Watson's article. And... Instantly, I knew it was the government-funded group connected to 1010, hooked in with the London Guardian. I go to their site. There's the Guardian, the sponsor. There's the British government. There it all is funding it. And you think it's a joke. Someone who hasn't been brainwashed, you watch it and you think it's a joke, just like the blowing up of the kids if they don't submit. It's not a joke. Again, they're conditioning us and rebranding tyranny, rebranding mass murder as if it's a good thing. They're hoping that you're so devoid of your own morals or compass that now that we're rudderless, they can bring in this extremism. And this is what smart growth is. This is, this is about the consolidation of power. Only insider corporations get the contracts. So when you watch this video that I'm going to be stopping and commenting on, remember, this is not a joke. They've got a whole bunch of them on this nightmare site that's linked in Paul Watson's articles. Planned Opolis, elitist agenda for eco-enslavement. And you guys did make Jesse Ventura the number one search term yesterday. Jesse Ventura censored. I want to do this again today. I waited a few weeks before we did this. Now we're going to launch a full-scale Google bomb operation. Uh, I want prison cities to be the number one search term today so that hundreds of other publications pick up on it. You notice the Mail, the Huffington Post, all these big publications picked up on our government testing angle on the bird deaths, now proliferating worldwide. We can punch through together, if we work together, we can punch through together and force people to see their own admissions of prison cities. They just want to show these videos to your school kids in the U.S., England, and Europe. See, they're already in a more advanced stage of brainwashing because they know they're a captive audience and are more easily manipulated. Like Al Gore said two years ago, hey, if your parents don't listen to you, you tell them what's right. You tell them what I tell you to tell them. The New York Times, little girls going home writing fake tickets to their mommy for taking a hot bath. They mean business. And again, real murderers, real fascists, real eugenicists learned, and they, uh, Eugenics Quarterly changed its name. All these groups admittedly became crypto eugenicists after Hitler embarrassed them. Up until the 1940s, it was all out in the open. And so now they pose as loving liberals. These people, in their own writings, all of them, slather with hatred. And the Copenhagen thing coming out that it was all a fraud and the global warming was all a fraud made them so mad. Literally hundreds of top professors, we write articles every week about it, it's all over mainstream news, say, yes, we want fascism. Ecofascism is good. Nazism is good. But against all humans, we're a parasite. Again, Three and a half, almost four years ago, Endgame wasn't done yet. I was working on a Saturday late at the office. The ballet recital was nearby my office. My wife and my parents show up with my children with my middle daughter in her ballerina outfit. They're a little bit early. They come in and I'm editing the film. There's research documents everywhere. Rob Jacobson, Aaron Dykes were all in there on a Saturday afternoon. And my mother watches part of the intro the part you just saw last hour, and she says, that can't be true. I know about eugenics and some of this, but it just can't be true. And my dad goes, actually, when I was at UT, before he was at UT, he was top of his class in high school. They had this advancement. They brought in several hundred students. He was in the top six. They brought him aside, told him, world government's coming. We want to advance you guys. Eugenics is good. And my dad told my mother that as we drove to the ballet recital, and her mouth was hanging open. They tell everybody this stuff. 
Every major university, that's all that's taught. Okay? And it teaches the so-called elitist, everybody who's got a high IQ, who gets advanced in these systems, that you're the best, you're going to survive, we're going to get rid of the profane. I mean, my father couldn't even go to UT as a high schooler and not be brainwashed about this. But he understood what it was because he was already so widely read. This is, this is everything, okay? This is what they're doing. Now, let's go ahead and start playing this nightmare clip. And we have links to the group, the organization, all of it. This is a part of the same affiliated group that put out the video of the kids' heads blowing off uh, if they don't submit to carbon taxing. Uh, here it is. This is not a joke. Here it is. Forum for the Future. Action for Sustainable World. How will the people travel in the cities of the future? This is the text. Mega cities on the move. Your guide to the future is sustainable urban mobility. Planned Opolis. One of four episodes in a world of fossil fuels and expensive energy. The only solution is tightly planned and controlled urban transport. Global climate change. Deal imminent. This is news headlines. Joint venture to get city ready. Floating cities approved because of rising tides. Global food rations. Food to be planned. Welcome to the planned economy. Government takes over all food production. Oh, hi. I'm so glad you're on time. I'm V. I'm looking forward to showing you around Plandopolis today. They show the subservient husband, woman. He works from home. He's a virtual engineer working in one of the city's desalination plants. He controls the robots who do all the important maintenance. I think he basically plays computer games for a living. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Have you got your calorie card open on your smartphone? Yeah, it pause. I registered your visit with Slick. This was completely written by MI6. All of it has little psychological cues like, don't worry, you'll still have your video games. You look at her husband, he's jacked in like a cyborg because the oceans rose and destroyed everything. And this is still taught. Complete lie. They don't care. Let's continue. Travel Corp the other day, so they've uh, allotted you a journey time to, to match mine. It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Switch off brain and go to work. <laughs> With this many people around, I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. Hit pause. We're but back it up a few seconds. Good job, guys. You notice all these movements we're just now hearing about, about a mega computer fairly giving out all the resources? Because the government's always real fair uh, with their statistics and things. N you know, none of that would ever be gamed. Notice all the movements we hear about that are the big solution, that are supposedly grassroots, that the mainstream media then embraces, telling us how the mega computer will run everything. That stuff's 100 years old. That's what they plan. But then they have the grassroots put it out to make people think it's legitimate, that it's coming from the grassroots, as Cass Sunstein said they would do. Let's continue. Around. I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. We're so lucky. Uh, our kids were allocated to school quite near my practice so I can drop them off on the way. It saves on our calorie ration. Well, it won't be long until the little darlings get their career announcements. They've been working again. so hard. The little darlings get their career announcements. They're, this is what Bill Gates is funding all over the world. The government and corporate sponsors will tell you what you're going to be. That's freedom, isn't it? The old caste society. And there's a calorie ration, and they've been allotted to be able, allowed to travel to work. they got to get an allotment every day. This is all going to happen. This is all going in. I have the New York Times from two days ago saying cameras will be everywhere watching us at all times. But don't worry, it's AI, so it's not violating your rights. Continue. Well, I'm sure they'll get something good. No, not that there's anything wrong with fixing carbon scrubbers for a living or anything. Are you hungry? Let's pop to the market as we're passing. Right, what's on the menu this month? No, not meat. It's not your birthday. The Global Food Council are doing a really good job of keeping food production going. I mean, you don't get the choice you used to, but we're better off than most. I think it's probably easiest to walk from here. You barely see a car in the city centre nowadays, unless you're rich. <laughs> Oh, the state knows they just aren't practical anymore. We're all trying to meet our global carbon deal. Electric bikes are so much better for getting around our neighborhood. And why waste valuable space on car parks when you can use them to grow food?
I don't care what you say, Alex. They don't deserve to live in that ghetto. They are completely disconnected. No high-speed transport system, no new internet. They miss out on jobs and many essential services, too. Oh, hi again. <laughs> what a day. I had to make a, an emergency visit to the Cry Freedom ghettos. I mean, I miss my sister like mad, but I'm glad they went when they moved right, to New pause. Amsterdam. They hit pause. They even get you ready for everybody being put in the, the ghettos. If you don't like this, you go to a ghetto. But then you're also in a prison in the high-tech grid, so they even get you ready for that, that there's going to be people that won't like it. Like H.G. Wells said, there'll be many gallant, young, beautiful people that have to be killed for the New World Order to come in. So they're even getting you ready for that. We'll be right back. So they're taking their time brainwashing our children, getting their systems in place, passing their carbon taxes. And when our Congress won't pass laws that couple in with the new international agreements, the EPA just enforces it on states like Texas with no law. This is tyranny. And that's what they've said in the last year in the London Guardian and all over foreign news and here in the U.S. Oh, if the people won't go along with this, we've got to have it be authoritarian for their own good. This is just authoritarian control freaks posing as good guys and claiming they're trying to save you. Let's finish up with this bizarre one of four part brainwashing pieces of the world they're going to build. Let's continue. A safe from climate change on the floating city. <laughs> that must be her now. It's much easier to meet up with friends virtually now. So many cities have banned cars in central areas. Ooh, looks like she's got some juicy gossip. Find out more about how we can live and travel in the cities of the future. Forumforthefuture.org and they've got a bunch more of these nightmare videos of how cool it is that she's not allowed to travel unless she has authorization. And then Prince Charles uh, addressed Austin last year and many other cities via hologram. You know, he addresses the city council and people and talks about how he doesn't travel for his carbon footprint. Meanwhile, he owns two private trains, scores of jet aircraft, tons of palaces. But then he does stunts about how he doesn't travel now. And how only essential travel should be allowed. Everything you see there is now being rolled out and promoted. Now I want to get into Paul Joseph Watson's articles on this. And I beg of you, make this the number one search term today. And yes, Google blocks us out so people won't be able to see it. You're all fully authorized to take these articles and post them on your site, your blog. Email them out to everyone you want. Prison cities. Prison cities is the search term. Prison cities. Let's fire another torpedo. Torpedo number two, flooding chamber now. Fire! Eco-fascist. 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 And let's make them even matter. Let's show them the real power of the info warriors. Torpedo one, prison cities. Torpedo two, eco-fascist. Torpedo three, prisonplanet.com. Hit them and hit them hard. They don't like it. Let's see if we can get one, two, and three. We, we've gotten the top three in a row repeatedly. Maybe I should fire another torpedo. That's up to you if these torpedoes hit the enemy. Eco-fascists call for prison cities. Here's the article. Obey Enviro tyranny or be banished to a ghetto threatens new government-funded propaganda piece. Remember, the British invented concentration camps. They call them reservations here and in Africa. That's how you deal with it. People who resist, by the way, that came out of the eugenics plan. People who resist the state controlling every aspect of their existence will be forced to live in squalid ghettos while the rest of the population will be tightly controlled in high-tech prison cities. That's the future envisioned by eco-fascists who are exploiting the contrived global warming fraud to openly flaunt their plan for total enslavement of mankind. And then I'm going to get into all the documents in the next segment of the actual physical tracking grid. The threat posed by the kind of scenario being promoted for the Forum of the Future, the group responsible for the chilling video below, cannot be emphasized enough. The dictatorial hellhole 
uh, where cars will be banned, meat rationed, farming completely abolished, and overtaken by the state, behavior cataloged by calorie cards. And notice that the EPA is now saying no dust is allowed from farming. Your farming, big aggregates, a waiver. It's written where they can shut down your farm, your ranch, even the, the, the date tree in your backyard. It says Codex Alimentarius in the bill, UN. Everything they're passing is UN, 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 UN. See, when I read all of this, all of it's being phased in. Meat rationed, farming, the British government proposed that. Farming completely abolished and overtaken by the state. But That's Stalin. Behavior cataloged by cal calorie cards and careers ordained by the government is the ultimate goal of the control freaks who have seized the reins of the environmental movement. Nearly every aspect of the policies undertaken by the global dictatorship that runs the planned opolis depicted in the video are lifted wholesale from historical tyrannies. The state completely taking over the means of food production and farming. This is a throwback to the Soviet system of collectivized farming, where Stalin organized land and labor in large-scale collective farms. Farmers who resisted the state taking over their farms were arrested and sent to Siberian gulags or the new cities, the ghettos. We're going to come right back. I mean, it is hardcore. This is the issue, not the scary Muslims in turbans they dance out on TV for you, openly run by the globalist. So what they're doing is, in a fun little, you know, happy, it's always presented by a woman, who Hitler said, first you get the women, then you've got the children, so follow the men. Edward Bernays, the father of modern advertising, nephew of Sigmund Freud, said you get the women, they make 80% of the purchases, still the same today. You get the women, then you've got the children, so follow the men. Women are at the center of the family. And the center of culture. It's not that women are bad. It's that women are key. And they know that women on average are more conformist. And if things are presented in a happy-go-lucky way, they will do it. Aztec women would bring their child up, bind it, give it to the priest, and be happy that their newborn baby or their toddler, bound with a rock, was thrown into a deep uh, chasm of water. That's how they like to kill kids, mainly. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it's the same thing. It was... It, it, this is how they do it. And so you notice the ads for uh, high fructose corn syrup that they run. It's the woman with her boyfriend in idyllic pastoral scenes over and over again, different variants, or at a park or at a backyard party. And the woman's handing out the food, always in a position of authority. And, and you know, she's the boss. And she tells her husband or her boyfriend, go ahead and have the popsicle. Go ahead and eat of the fruit. No, corn syrup's not bad for you. It's quite good for you. And then she'll give him some scientific stuff, and the husband admits, or the boyfriend admits he's an idiot. Or there'll be another moron woman who the queen bee corrects and explains to. And so this is how they always target it. This is how they work it. Just like if you went back to a plantation 170 years ago in Alabama, and you, and, and you rode up in your carriage, you'd be met by several big black women. And they could speak clear English. They could probably even read. And this was their operation. And sometimes they even bossed master around, if you read the cultural histories. And the men were kept out in the barn and hardly could talk. And those women would go back there and just beat them down. Ah, you learn, you boy. Now, that's how it works in Rome. Caesar did the same thing. He'd roll into uh, Albion or Germany or Gaul. First thing they'd do is slaughter all the men, and then they'd sit there and beat those little boys in front of their women. They'd take a teenager, slit their throat, and they'd say to the women, you keep them in line or we're going to kill all of them. And those women would just absolutely suppress their men forever back in Rome or wherever they were taken to plantations, Austria, you name it. It's all, and I've got all the handbooks on it. These are all publicly shown them to you on air. I've got slave manuals from the sugarcane operations uh, in uh, the Caribbean. What was the former name of what's uh, Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic? Um, Hispaniola. I got a manual from Hispaniola, 1701. Got to dig that back out. I mean, this is how they run it, and they run it well. They know exactly what they're doing. You've seen all the old uh, black and white movies from the 30s and 40s where they phased it out, political correctness, 
where it shows the black mammy running everything. My dad grew up in East Texas, cotton farming, and uh, with uh, black foreman women who were bossing around the poor white farm hands. This is how it works. And that's basically what Oprah Winfrey is. Uh, and that's how the globalists operate. Okay, and you need to get that through your head. You need to understand they know scientifically what they're doing. Okay? I remember reading in some of the Caribbean manuals, which were then exported and translated into English for use by the slave owners uh, here in what is the United States today, uh, in Virginia and other areas, and uh, it described how even when they took slaves off the boat, they would, and they even cited the Roman manuals, uh, how they would take the biggest, strongest, you know, clear leader of the blacks that survived. You could always tell by everybody looking to them, uh, you know, to, you know, kind of get their orders, who was seen as the dominant black male getting whoever survived the coffin ship off, whether it was Boston or New York or uh, Galveston, Texas or New Orleans, Louisiana, and they're getting them off the ship. They bring them up there to the block. But before they even do that, they would... Uh, beat to death or kill one of the strongest, most intelligent, obvious leaders in front of the women, and then they would have their translator explain it all to them. I mean, they got it all figured out, okay? Feminism, CIA funded the whole deal. And they've done a good job. Look, our society's completely destroyed. All right, uh, getting back to the uh, eco-fascist, uh, Adolf Hitler. First you get the women, then you got the children, so follow the men. Adolf Alois Hitler. Uh, continuing, eco-fascist call for prison cities. People who resist the state control of every aspect of their lives will be forced to live in ghettos. And you just saw that from the piece. And they admit that there will be uh, farming run by the state. Uh, continuing, uh, Stalin organized land labor into large-scale collective farms. Farmers who resisted the state taking over their farms. That'll be big agribusiness doing it. Uh, were arrested and sent to Siberian gulags as a result of the mass seizure of property and the disruption that collected farming brought to food production. Upwards of three million people died from starvation from 1932 to 33 alone. Well, yeah, that was just Ukraine. That's was over 20 mil in the starvation overall. A similar system imposed in Maoist China under the Great Leap Forward led to the Great Chinese Famine and the starvation of at least 36 million people. And that was planned as well. We've had top historians on that subject. The uh, incarceration of resistors and green fascism inside squalid ghettos and their subsequent separation from family members is a frightening throwback to Nazi-run Warsaw Ghetto and other concentration camps and prisons within cities that house Jews and political dissidents during World War II. Uh, the restriction or even outlawing of meat, something already being vehemently pushed by eco-fascists, we have links to them saying it, to the point where a hamburger becomes a rare delicacy to be enjoyed on special occasions. Yeah, the state on your birthday might give you a little meat. And only then if you can afford it. Well, that sounds like a North Korean prison camp. And Watson continues to write, As my wife, who is Chinese, will attest, up until the late 80s, before China started to lift itself out of poverty, meat was a rare treat uh, that was sparsely available and highly restricted. Again, the planned opolis is nothing less than a fusion of communist and fascist control measures inflicted upon population to keep them poor, starving, and weak. The people who produced this video, funded by the monolithic elitist bankers and corporations like Royal Dutch Shell, Bank of America, as well as British government, Paul has a link to this group, an article about who they're funded by, uh, know very well that every aspect of their planned opolis is lifted directly from the most abhorrent and brutal dictatorships in history. And they go on to admit that, and they know it. They're very proud of it. They are openly flaunting the eco-fascist ideology behind the Green Movement. They now call themselves eco-fascists. It's a total embracing of this Hitlerian system. Of course, as made clear in the video, none of the regulations or controls will apply to any of the elitist imposing them on the rest of us. See, it looks like a joke in that video because it's meant to flaunt it, to break your will. Think Al Gore and his multiple Oceanside mansions with heated swimming pools. 
they will still be able to roll around in SUVs and mansions with heated swimming pools. They will still be able to, again, roll around and fly around their private jets while quaffing the finest uh, filet steak and belching tons of CO2 as they lecture the rest of humanity about their carbon footprint. Think Prince Charles and his insistence that the proles not be allowed to take a bath as he uh, lounges in a luxuriant splendor of royal palaces. Call Watson up. There's a phantom S right there at number eight. Uh, continuing, uh, they are also engaged in a ploy to shift the parameters of the Overton window, which is defined as a range of political policies considered to be politically acceptable in the current uh, climate of public opinion by constantly bombarding us with extreme and repugnant proposals they gradually wear down the human psyche until people begin to accept draconian controls over their personal lives as normal necessary and reasonable the, the the mind is so strong and ready to face adversity that when you hear about war with iran coming forever you subconsciously almost want to see it go ahead and happen or when you hear about mass die-off of humanity promoted by Discovery Channel and all these shows and how it's coming, you almost want to get it over with, see? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is part of the reason behind last year's Splattergate controversy where global warming alarmists, again funded by government and big business, produced an infomercial in which children who refused to lower their carbon emissions were slaughtered in an orgy of blood and guts. We're going to play that in a minute. This is a psychological attack and a realization of the stepping stone method of tyranny. Whereas we might not accept cars being banned or meat being rationed now, we will accept incandescent light bulbs being outlawed and paying carbon taxes on fuel. That's what's so great about Watson. I called up to him for 10 minutes and just spewed information. And he just sat there without even writing notes and spewed it all right back out with precision. And then added his own understanding overlay to this article and wrote this article in about 30 minutes. Got to salute Paul Watson. What an incredible job. I can't believe he got all of this exactly right. Spewed at him at 100 miles an hour as I was ranting and guzzling coffee, walking around in my backyard. This is a psychological attack and a realization of the stepping stone method to tyranny. Whereas we might not accept cars being banned and meat being rationed now, we will accept incandescent light bulbs being outlawed and paying carbon taxes on fuel. As each hurdle is cleared, the globals propose something more extreme so that we will always come to a compromise and accept a slighter, lesser tyranny. But in the long term, the elitists achieve all of their goals with a plum. Hmm. Uh, continuing, it's good to read a piece that's just so, so precise. I, I love exposing the globalist. And to top it all off, the debate between the liberals over at the Guardian website in response to the story did not revolve around a castigation of the authoritarian future hell, but a question on whether old people should merely be advised by government workers how to kill themselves when they reach 65 or whether the state should just kill them directly. Remember Bill Joy, owner of Sun Microsystems, writing 11, no, 12 years ago now, how he went to an elitist meeting of other co computer owners, uh, billionaires, and they had debates all weekend about do we just kill everyone or do we entertain them and uh, build a false reality for them because they're not needed because of computers anymore and robotics. Human life isn't cheap, it's worthless. And uh, the decision is that you're bad for the earth, I'm bad, so we're dead. And now they're just teaching us by increment how to die. Remember last year, the cover of Newsweek, the case for killing Granny? Oh, there's no death panels, but we want to kill Granny. And then I saw the Newsweek the week before that, I can hardly ever even read it, it's so painful. They had a weird article with the Grim Reaper with two old people and how beautiful it is to commit suicide. But the globalists, they don't commit suicide. Dick Cheney has a bionic heart. They've added a, a bionic part onto it, a pump. He's trying to get a heart transplant right now. You notice he's clinging. You notice the big uh, uh, head, Mr. Jobs of Apple, who funds all this eugenics and promotes it endlessly. You notice he got a liver transplant. It was a little suspicious how fast he got it. Went out to Tennessee to get it. No discussion of where that goody came from. I got a good idea. Oh, but he's got something to offer, doesn't he? Uh-huh. And as if that isn't evil enough, they're not just wanting to get rid of the dumbed-down people, which is horrible. No, their real target is those that are smart. Mm -hmm. That's why they put uh, sterilants and IQ reducers in the water. 
And see, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I've got enough fight in me when people openly write how they're doing that to me. I tend to get mad, and I tend to get organized, and I tend for 16 years on air to try to build an InfoWars weapon system to defend my family. And to defend my family, I've got to defend everybody else. We all hang together or hang separate. I'm getting chills right now, ladies and gentlemen. I want to beat these people. I want to take them on. I want to bring them down. But it's going to take you waking up and getting your guts going, getting your good old boy guts turned on and getting focused. You know, the enemy loves to teach us that we've already lost. We haven't lost. We've won. They're taking on a bold operation and they're going to fail. They will fail 100% if you simply decide to get take action against them effectively. A lot of us have committed ourselves 110%. The least you can do is get active. So they go on to debate, do we just kill the old people or ask them to kill themselves? This is all being openly discussed, and it's all liberal. It's all loving killing people. This kind of despotic destiny is not only being pushed by the elite, it has an army of greenwashed zombies behind it who have been recruited to make the demon side of the elderly to useless eaters an intellectually acceptable and reasonable idea. Presumably, the disabled and the mentally ill will also be exterminated in the pursuit of the highly efficient planned opolis, another idea of which Hitler would have vehemently approved. He actually designed with Albert Speer uh, the, the mega cities and the environmental grid. Meat would not be allowed. You will not be allowed. I mean, it's, it's uh, total. It's all happening. Just, cops are laughing right now because they've been preconditioned. Just go ahead, laugh all you want. Go ahead and laugh. You're part of the structure. You're going to win, aren't you? No, you're not going to win. You're already being killed. Once government is given the power to kill anyone they deem to be unproductive, this uh, collectivist Orwellian nightmare, the gates of hell are now thrown wide open. In comparison, meat rationing, carbon taxes, eco-surveillance, calorie credits, and transport restriction will seem like a walk in the park. Alex Jones' seminal film, Endgame, released in 06, Produced in 06, released in early 07, uh, warned precisely of the kind of high-tech slave grids being implemented that are now routinely proposed by top eco-fascist organizations. We urge you to warn everyone you know about this agenda. And it's the dominant agenda. It's in place. It's being executed. And to stand up in unison to resist the first great assault on human liberty in the 21st century, which is now certain to be inflicted upon us under the guise of saving Mother Earth while the globalists butcher it with all the genetic engineering. We either stop this now, or we end up on the eco-ghettos and the masters have readied for us in their planned opolis. What do I say in the film Endgame? What do I have? It's, it's an image of the UN building with a big skull on it with all the flags of the countries removed. And on the back, what does it say? They want you dead. They want you dead. And these crooks sit there and lie and say there were no death panels when they've been in place in Europe for decades. They tell these idiot yuppies, uh, to, Bill Gates gets up. We're going to play that clip after the break. Bill Gates gets up on television and says, do we hire 10 teachers or lay them off or do we not give grandma care? And then the, the people hearing that, the dumb 30-year-old teachers, they think, well, yeah, kill granny, I want money. As if it's not an endless pie that just expands. The first thing they teach collectivists is that the pie is a some set game. So that somebody's got to lose for you to win. Not win, 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 go to the stars. They produce videos for children saying leaving Earth is a scourge. Humans are a disease we mustn't leave. Teaching you you're worthless. But what do I say here on the back of Endgame? For the new world order, a world government is just the beginning. Once in place, they can engage their plan to exterminate 80% of the world's population, while enabling the elites to live forever with the aid of advanced technology. This film was shocking three years ago, four years ago. It is now prescient. Because I read their own documents, people are now ready to see Endgame. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Remember how nuts I sounded just a few years ago covering this? Because I was reading UN reports and Club of Rome and CFR, where they were admitting geoengineering, global population reductions, face scanning cameras, infrared satellites, tracking our individual infrared signatures. 
now, and I'm going to get into this next hour with Alan Watt, it's just, oh, yeah, you know, Associated Press, Germany deploying secret spy satellites. Uh, they claimed it was for the environment, but really it's infrared images uh, scanning your body. Detroit public schools give 40,000 kids laptops with stimulus funds. Of course, the, st the laptops will be used to watch you at home. Now it's just, yeah, we do that. Uh, here's the New York Times. Incredible article. Computers that see what you keep. Computers that see you and keep watch over you. Computers that see you and keep watch over you. And then it goes on to say, computers, not to surveil you, but AI computers designed by DARPA to make sure you washed your hands right. To make sure you're feeding your kid, to make sure you're not giving your kid uh, tea that's too hot. I mean, they actually say it. Everything, it's going in. Smart meters are going in Austin where I live to control your thermostats. I mean, it, and they admit it. I mean, it's just total control. They're just doing it. Federalization, CIA runs spy centers. And it's run by a government caught staging terror attacks. And then they put ads out and say, we're extreme for not liking this message that children will be murdered. That's the message shown to school kids if they don't submit to the carbon tax. That's the message. We will kill you. But then in the end game, it is to kill them. They're teaching that it's like a bloodthirsty fetish, that it's a power trip of all these throngs of enviro zombies that couldn't get a job, couldn't build anything, just lazy people who will now be the eco-fascist green cop enforcers. The issue here is this was government funded. Now, it's got so many layers of propaganda, it's like a 50-layer cake, but... It's peer pressure for kids. The message is you'll be murdered by your authority figure teacher if you don't submit to this. And it brutalizes the mind. And it teaches you that murdering is good if it's state run. And this is all their plan. And when you run into these weird, glazed-eyed biological androids who are into this, they'll go, that's right, we are going to do that. And they giggle like they're part of it as they drink a glass of water at the restaurant filled with sodium fluoride and hundreds of other deadly chemicals on record put in there to hurt them. And, and, and even if they admit it, they kind of get off on it. So to all of you, go ahead. You kill yourselves first, not me and my kids. You understand, trash? Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.